We offer everything. We are all personal trainers who are professionals, uh, really high level. We're constantly educating ourselves, we're constantly educating each other. Um, we do MMA, we do shaking classes, boot camps, uh, KO8, strength and conditioning, weight, fat loss. There's absolutely nothing we don't cover. Now, we're not the type of people to sit there and pretend we know everything because nobody does. So we have the correct people surrounding us also in, in regards to training, education, science. So, we, you know, you ask us a question, we'll either give you the answer there and then, or we'll know it within the hour. What are good people to be by? Right? The gym started itself by my brother, Lee Chadwick. He started everything. He is now the Cage Warriors world champion. He trained me up as an MMA fighter. He got me started as a personal trainer, although I was involved myself in the forces. I had a, a misdirection in life, which led to getting involved with Lee. Started MMA, started personal training. It's a long, long time ago, over five years ago now. Um, and to be honest with you, Lee is one of them people who, if you've got time for you, you can make it work. Got our time for you, and if you, if you, if you, if he teaches you, you listen because he knows what he's talking about. He is the correct person to listen to. So to be honest with you, mate, it was a women's situation for me getting involved with Lee. Then eventually, you know, I got enough money behind me to be able to go after them and um, bought this little place. We do shaking classes, boot camps, KOA class, HIT. We also do boxing classes. MMA classes, children's MMA classes, but mainly we are a private gym. Unless you're invited, you won't get in here. Um, other than classes, it's all through personal training, really. Um, we've got some high profile clients that come here that need the privacy and want the privacy, so it's really important that we keep that. And that's the stigma of the gym, also. You know, it's not a place where you can just walk in and train, which is good. Um, but then on the other hand, when you do finally, if you finally get near, you, you get you get what you want out of it. No, I wouldn't put it down to age limits. Um, I put it down to basically some children are more afraid to go to a gym. Some children want to get involved in a gym. Some children can't. Some children won't. So if the child asks the parent they want to get involved in some maybe some private MMA sessions or some private training sessions, which they do, and we've had four year olds and five year olds asking, for me that's fantastic. I love that, and the fact that the parents bring them in, I honestly couldn't ask for no more. I love parents who push the children, and I love it when children say they're interested in this and that. So we try and approach them in the correct manner and give them what they need. Um, so I wouldn't say we've got an age limit. I would just say we'll meet the children. We'll we'll see how they adapt to the building, how they adapt to the training, and then we take it from there, and if they're suitable, then we crack on. Well, I, me and me, me partner, Stoke Brother Lee, are also owners of BDC Boxing, what we call a show, which has gone absolutely massive now. We've got so many high-profile celebrities involved, and half of Liverpool involved, it's massive. So we have another show coming up on the 10th of March, which is quite big. I can't wait for that. We love them shows and the people that get involved. And you know what? We get all walks of life in BBC. We get every type of person. But as soon as you get in the show, they're all just, oh, they're all just nice people. They're all good. We know what they're capable of. We know who they are. But when they get there, they just want to have a drink and have a ball. So we must seem to set some sort of trend for them where they can just come in comfortably and have a good laugh whereas a lot of shows in town and stuff like that it seems to be quite aggressive but uh, as it stands you know we, we seem to have uh, controlled that environment and hopefully we have the respect enough of them to continue that way so we've got BDC on the 10th of March also I will be fighting Kev Kev Murray from Kev's Cabs on the 28th of July which is the show after and um, I can I don't know whether I can wait for that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yes, there is. So you can, you can get me on Facebook, Paul Bentley, uh, Instagram, Paul Boom Boom Bentley, Twitter, at Paul Bentley 12. Um, and there's a page, the BBC page on Facebook. Every fighter has tickets to sell. 
you can pay on the door, but I'm not sure you're going to get it on the 10th of March. As I say, it's, it's, there's always a sellout, and I think it's sold out. So, good luck. Give it a go. As for the Kev's Cabs one, we have to separate what's part of the business, which BDC is a business, and what's part of the charity. So, me and Kev will be fighting for charity on that show, but there's still going to be 17 other fights on that are fighting themselves as a business. So, we're going to make sure that we can arrange um, the correct charitable profit to go to where we want it to go so um, that's something we have to work on but tickets are available from me or kev with that and there will be more information on that coming up mate look we are constantly going up as it stands we are going bigger and bigger all the time i love we went from a really big gym and we had that and we've been there and we've escalated and we could have places all over, over the gaff but we're comfortable as we are now we have kind of grew out of it there's a lot there's a lot that could be done we're going to be building floors we are going to be in the future we're going to be opening more fpts's in different cities um through popular demand weirdly enough also um we're kind of hitting america it's weird but true we've had a lot of people contacting myself about getting involved in our gym regime and our internet uh, relationship from America. Um, I've just been talking to a girl who's massively involved in the fitness industry in America, so I don't know where that's going to end up. Um, I've started working on the radio uh, city talk at 9am, which is getting um, quite a lot of um, high profile people asking about the gym and wanting to be here. So we are reaching the levels that we thought we would, and now we're about to surpass them. We're just going to decide how we're going to go about it and still keep the stigma that we've got in this gym. Obviously, we want to create that in the next gym we built, if that's what we decide to go down. But we have got plans. Um, can't talk about all of it just yet as it's private, but we're going places, I can assure you that. We've got everything we need here. Um, we choose to have this room separated from, from next door. Because we have certain clients that just want to concentrate on certain things and next door we have a lot of lads doing a fight and a certain condition so we can get a little bit tangled. Um, if you have a little look around you'll see we've got everything that's needed for you and a lot more and we, we also work on the client's ability and we ask what they want. Some clients ask for certain exercises, some clients ask for certain things so we actually get the stuff in for the clients you'll find. Most stuff that we've got in is because of being asked for. This is our like press machine. Now look what you'll notice is that our stuff is not the most newest stuff. It's not the most high tech. It's not about that. We're not that type of gym. We're an old fashioned gym. We work hard, we train hard, it's a blood, sweat and tears type of gym. You can have everything as fancy as you want, but it depends on yourself and it depends on how you train. This is our like press machine. Now it's Leg day. Everybody likes leg day. End up walking out like John Wayne. <laughs> but uh, everyone likes leg like day. Releases the most hormones in the body, you know. But there you got our weight track again, like I said before, it's very old fashioned, but this is how we like it. It's not that we can't afford to change it, we just don't want to change it. If it's not broke, why fix it? Chest press. Climb. Latissimus torsi. Now, I'm wondering how many people are going to pull me on my technique. You know, he's at the odd smart ass, I've got a lot to say. But that, this is it, guys. You know, this is what we've got, this is what we do. As I say, this is a private gym. If you come to this gym, you'll come by invite or you'll come with a personal trainer. So when you're here, you'll be on your own. It's not going to be surrounded by millions of people. So this is all you need. You don't need no more than that. Next door is where all the magic happens. Okay, guys, so this is a multi functional room. Um, as you can see, we've got our KO8 bands on the wall. We're the first gym to start off on Liverpool with Kieran Owen. We've got uh, loads of classes on KO8. Our trainers are mostly educated on the KO8 bands. If they're not, we will train them. If you start working here, it's compulsory to learn the KO8, KO8 bands. As, you know, for me, it's a, it's a must. It's massive. Kettlebells. Bikes. Cardio equipment. And basically, guys, in this room, it's 
like torture. Um, we do quite a lot in here. There's quite a lot that goes on. Also, we've got our cage where we train the boxing lads. And we do MMA. This is Lee. This is the uh, partner. And this is my son. Paul. Paul's a training personal trainer here. We mentor young PTs and we educate them and we try to help them so they're not getting caught up in the six week process that we've had quite a lot of lately. Um, so what we do is we, we, we allow them to pass the course and then they get shadowed, I mentored for 12 months before we actually take them on. So it's a good process we have in here and the person saying is they always end up with much Now I know this is be shown so there's going to be a tiny little preferential treatment. You're not a bad looking kid, I don't know how I tell you. Yeah. I don't like this dance with a man because it wasn't me. But um, you know, you like it. Boston, you like gyms, family gyms. It's a good gym, it's got a good reputation. Um, there's, there's nothing to be honest with you that we don't facilitate. The people that come in here, we, we try to welcome them with, with open arms. We love new people to come in here so we can show them that it's a proper place, a real place where you can train correctly. Rather than going into a gym where, you know, we, apparently nowadays we, we've got the world set on vanity and everybody's standing in the mirrors pulling the tops off, we've got a few rules for people like that. So. It's a really nice, pleasant place for somebody new to come in and, and learn on how to train. Okay guys, also this is our mat. We have children's MMA classes, we have private MMA sessions. I'm a part of Next Generation, which is massive. I've got to say it's probably the biggest club in Europe for me. It's the best club in Europe. I get trained by Paul Rimmer for me, the best coach on the planet. So anything I do, anything I learn goes through him. Um, I'd like to say I've been there more than I should, but I haven't this, this, this year. So I've been saying a lot more this year and I'm getting back in the cage this year also. I can't wait. But what we do is we also teach clients a little bit of MMA so we can do certain things, maybe protect ourselves, get ourselves in a position where we can learn and where we can make people scream. <laughs> so, We've got everything, there's absolutely nothing that we haven't got. Um, it's a lovely place, it's a family place, and you know what, everybody's welcome here. Right guys, um, this is where on a Thursday, I come at around quarter to nine, nine o'clock, and we have a little show on, city talk called, what time do you come here? Trying to leave yours? I'm late. Do you? Yeah. I'm always late. Jeez. Always late. And the ten, ten to eight, I have to leave one. Just this all the time. Well, to eight. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> this is short. This is massive. This is me partner in crime. We, we have a lot of fun um, on the radio, and, and we, we get asked questions about the amazing. We talk about our sports. We question our own uh, integrity sometimes, and our, intel <laughs> our intelligence is <laughs> shit. <laughs> Between us, this war. Yeah, we're allowed. It's one of them. <laughs> um, so, I'm just going to ask Sean a few questions now while we're, while we're on my show. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were just going with I mean, the questions there. I mean, there. I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. Well, yeah, so this is what we do, and, 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 and you know, we uh, we have a good time. It's it's, it's very funny. Tell it? them who's just won there, they're by the way, anyway. Let me explain what goes on here, right? The lad who's on the radio with his mat or speed, they're both wolves. And they, both love, and they love Birk and Ed, so for the scouts to win on the Battle of Maisie, it's a bad thing. They go home and they, they, they probably do the business or something, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, keeps, about, it? it keeps winning, it keeps winning, and uh, I'm not getting away at the minute. But this is what we do. Uh, yeah, stand up and I'll show you, I'll show you uh, just on the outside, it's quite good. Cool. The view's amazing, isn't it? This is our view, yeah. It's quite good. Also, we've got a charity football match coming up soon. I'm actually agreed to be our manager, haven't you, lad? Yeah, yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be <laughs> our manager. <laughs> he looks like a football manager, though, doesn't he? Hey, listen, I'm going to be your manager, mate, yeah. I mean, look at this, this look at this. Tammy and Rovers. This is where we're playing. We're playing at Tammy's ground for charity. Do you know what? I was thinking about it the night, you know, when you were saying about it. Yeah, and um, I said, I want a list of all the players. The positions they play, I'll take it right, I'll be bang on, I'll take it serious, mate. Yeah. Right. Well, what I'll do is I'll let the players and I'll just watch from the sidelines like a manager does, keep a little eye on things, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep myself in the loop, you know what I mean? When I'm doing something like that, I'm, and not only that, because it's, like it's a game, it's a competition, it's like, 
I want to win. I'm, I'm thinking like we need trainer. And I so we had a choice trainer. actually here whether I could choose Mickey Mellon, some of the players from Tamir or Masha. And we chose Masha. And this no player, is it? This is Matt also. Is it Tammy boy? <laughs> Matt is involved in the conspiracy that we've just been talking about. Yes, Matt. Right, right. <laughs> my mate, my mate. Yeah. Come to our for something. Well, yeah, yeah, we had a choice who we wanted as a manager, and we chose Masha because of his aggressive attitude towards life. I want, I want to win, striving to win, to succeed, even if we're just doing a charity, playing football. Can you imagine the team talk he has before he actually gets on the oh, list? It'll be emotional. <laughs>